This movie time is brought to you by the Gateway Film Center, 1550 North High Street, Columbus, Ohio. Further details and showtimes online at gatewayfilmcenter.org. The award-winning It's Movie Time is produced by John DeSando. Listen to the shows and read the reviews online at wcbe.org. I'm John DeSando. I'm Simone Wilkinson. And this is It's Movie Time. Simone, Mel Gibson is back. Mel Gibson <laughs> is back. <laughs> Ten years since he's directed a film. Last one was Apocalypto. Now we have Hacksaw Ridge. What's this about? You know, so I didn't know what it was about when we walked in. I just thought, what a weird name. Obviously, we're going to go and watch a movie. Same Private Ryan. Everybody's going to get hacked apart. No problem. Good one. <laughs> right? right. <laughs> and it, was, it wasn't just a movie where it was about a war and people getting attacked. It was it was a love story. It was heartwarming. It was a melodrama. It was a fight, you know, between good and evil emotionally, I think. Oh yeah, it's a uh it's it's Gibson uh who who knows no restraint. Uh this is a true story. World War Two, Okinawa. Uh we're fighting for a ridge that if we get it means uh perhaps the close of the war with the Japanese. And uh, But in the heart of the story, as you're talking about, the emotional heart of that, is about Desmond Doss, who was the first Medal of Honor winner for a conscientious objector. So how does Gibson do this? How does he take this heartwarming story and present a, 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 a war story? You know what? It, it's interesting, and I think a lot of it has to do with Andrew Garfield. And, and I went in with preconceived thoughts on this. I really did. So I am thinking, this this is Spider-Man. <laughs> Spidey. Not, not even the original <laughs> Spider-Man. It is the Plan 3, we've done four movies, here's Spider-Man. And I'm thinking, oh. Yeah. Oh. How can this guy be a hero? In, in the film, you have the traditional drill sergeant, played what? by Vince Vaughn. And when Vaughn sees him, he, you know, he has a, a particular designation for each one to humiliate each one exactly. of the, the new ones. And, and he, he did said, a great job he, at he it. He didn't even do good. And he says, Simone, he says, when he sees uh, Desmond, he says, I've seen cornstalks with better physiques. <laughs> <laughs> and so you have this spindly guy, really dorky looking guy, yeah. who, who was going to save 75 soldiers as a, a medic and I, I mean it's it you you go you see him in his hometown and he's climbing mountains like a goat and you it's... think okay maybe this will get him through the training but he's screwed <laughs> everywhere else this is not going to work why did they pick him now i'm frustrated but i i tell you what he made the movie you just he, he he's just so modest. I think he really did a great job with Desmond Doss, and he really he really brought you in. He brought you into the movie, and you're thinking, oh, oh. Because uh, with Gibson, there's always a chance of it going off the deep end about his being a gospel-toting Seventh-day Adventist. All right, we know he's not going to work on Saturdays, and we know he doesn't want to touch a gun. So how is Gibson going to handle this? He also, besides getting Garfield, he has this very, I think, very fine actress, Teresa, Teresa Palmer, as his, as his wife-to-be. And the two of them create a chemistry that I, I think you're right, is really amazing, contrasting with the second part of the film that is vintage Gibson. Absolutely, and that's a very good point, John. You don't actually get to the war until one hour into the movie. <laughs> yes, yes. What's his like? What's his action like? Mel Gibson's yeah. action in the movie. Oh, it, it, horrific. You know what? It's interesting because you get in your car, you like to drive home, you blast the music, you're singing, having a fabulous time. <laughs> uh, I did not put any music on, and I just sat there and thought, and as I drove home... It took me about 25 minutes to get home from the preview, and I literally thought to myself, I am shell-shocked. I, I have shell-shock. It was just horrific. You had body parts just hanging out uh, 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 like hamburgers, yeah, like hamburgers exactly, with exactly. intestines. And you know what was really interesting? In the first hour, you go to boot camp. It, it, they build you into these characters, this team, this group, right. and you think, oh, okay, I feel for you, I like you, you're funny. Right. 
they get to the top of that ridge, we lost 17 of them, and they yeah. just shot them yeah. straight in the head. Yeah. It, it, it was so shocking it and was horrific. And his sense of realism is amazing to me. His almost pornographic love of violence is, is well documented when, oh, you, when yes. you consider even back to Braveheart and then Apocalypto and all, you know, his, and the, the Passion of the Christ. I mean, and throw in there, Simone, that element of hyper Christianity, perhaps, could I say? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, it, it, you see the moments where he, early on in the film, that really defined Desmond Doss's character, and I, hopefully we don't give this away. He's fighting with his brother and suddenly swings and hits him in the As head a young man, with, a, yeah. with a brick. Yeah. And that's defining for him. But once he does that, he walks to the wall and is looking at the commandments that says, Thou shalt not kill. Yeah, in number six. And, and he is fixed forever. You're quite right. And, and if you want to get a feel for this, then know most recently about... Uh, how we have dealt with gays in the military, yeah. and how it must have been under that uh, don't tell uh, kind of a motif in the army. And watch him here trying to convince his superiors and his peers that he's sincere about his conscientious objection. And serving in the war while doing it. And they tried to tell him he was crazy and kick him out. Right. <laughs> and it was just such a terrible thing. Hold on. Go ahead. Sorry, uh, I wasn't sure if we were fighting yeah. through it. Huh? I wasn't sure if we should fight, fight through that, you poor thing. You feel it? Oh, pulse. no. Oh, yeah. <coughs> I'm good. Um, Go wherever you want. Oh, no. So, um, what was... Oh, it, what is interesting... They try and throw him out, saying he's Section 8. Basically say, we can't say that he's crazy. He just is a conscientious objector. And it it is so, to your point, going back to that don't ask, don't tell, they basically said, you are just shoving this in our face. Just go home. And, and the people that he saves, he's, he, he saves in this movie, actually beat him to try and get him to go. Yeah, and it, it is so sweet to see how, sweet I guess, it's so clear and real to see how they appreciate what he has done for them and how they just mistook him for a coward. And that's a, a great way of, of, of looking at the, the, the tension in this film, which is really still surprising me how good it is, given, and, you know, <clears throat> Simone, do you feel, as I do, that it's, that it's perhaps illegitimate to bring in the artist for his work of art? In other words, Mel Gibson as director? I mean, why do I come back to that? You know, I feel, as I was thinking about it, I feel two ways about that. If you ask me, do I think this movie could stand alone without Mel Gibson? Yes. I do. Yes, good. And did you feel that as I well? Did feel, I did feel that exactly, yeah. Mm. But... When you look at the war scenes, Mel Gibson has an art for taking us up to the line and then going over it and horrifying us. Yes, yes. And, you know, perhaps the least catastrophic part of the film, to me, is almost the most moving. And that's when our hero saves the men that they have left behind on the ridge. They have all gone back down the ropes and they've left them, and he takes them, and he hauls each one down separately. And there is less violence in this than anywhere else, but yet there is more tension as you see these bodies coming down, as you, as you realize what he has done as a human being. And uh, if you remember his line, he asked the Lord, just one more, does he say? Help me, help me get right. one more. Yes, yes. Um, and... You know, then if you put together some of the other characters, and, you know, part of this is formulaic. I mean, we've seen dozens of films uh, mm -hmm. in the on war, and you know each character is going to play out his fate, but we're going to get to know him and identify with him at the beginning. But there was something else uh, that besides this, it was a formula started by Saving Private Ryan. You remember the first scene? Oh, it was, it was yes, the first scene of... Pro Saving Private Ryan was also horrific. Yes, right. <laughs> and 
you know what I and Mel Gibson does the same thing very not in the same way but you start with war and it's just chaos it's blurry you don't understand what's going on but you just see death all around and characters done I thought he set the movie up very well oh I, and and I would say I believe that his opening shots which have a lot of slow motion in them but the opening shots of war are more powerful than those of Spielberg in Saving Private Ryan. Would you say that that's fair? You know, I would because it felt more personal to me because of the angles he chose to shoot. It was me. I, I was there and it was what I was seeing. Whereas you, some of Saving Private Ryan was, here is, see the macro view of, of everything great. and this was this is happening to me you're great and you're right I believe there are many more close-up shots in that original to give you that sense that personal sense yeah uh, well yeah as a side note and this we may not even put in but as a side note is there anything Australian about this film you know what it actually um, couple things it was very interesting because this is filmed in Australia yes <laughs> which I thought was quite um, quite good then that you were welcoming on your show to discuss this one and it's interesting in some of the wide shots I could see Australian trees oh, all right. in it and Hugo Weaving does a great job Rachel Griffith beautiful I love them they are yeah. Australian actors and they they just Hugo Weaving made it as a father who was such a conflicted soul it, and it really goes back to Mel Gibson's view of war feeling senseless and essentially, he he is a man who served in World War One, with three of his best friends. He's the only one that survived, and it really made me think. You know, you're damned if you do, and you're damned if you don't, because these these three men they died very young, unexpected. We see that in war, and yet this man who survived and should have a great life was absolutely ruined by it. Yes. So he felt the guilt of surviving, and obviously they died. And you sort of see that carry on in the generation. He was drunk. He was very violent with his children. I really think that set up the character of Desmond Doss. And obviously his, his actual life and how he felt later on in being a conscientious objector. And I thought that was very interesting that in fact his dad is the one who saved him. Oh, isn't that? Yeah. Talk about bravery. This is a film yeah. about bravery. Yeah. And talk about how brave his dad was. Oh. After the, uh, you very uh, appropriately characterized him as conflicted, mm. and and then he comes to court to save his son. The military. it's a wonderful scene. And Simone, I wish that Hugo Weaving would get a nomination for this role. I think he should. I mean, it. Oh, yeah. he, he did a great job. <laughs> he re he really did. Um, there's a, he's sitting at the dinner table. They're eating fried chicken. <laughs> And he is essentially saying to his first son, Hal, I believe, who enrolled in the army first, he comes in his uniform, and and you see this scene where he's literally saying, well, you know, I hope the bullet doesn't go through through the, your back. I hope it goes through the front because it went through the back of my friend and his intestines flew out everywhere and ruined his uniform, and I would hate for you to ruin your uniform. You know, I remember that scene vividly. It's a, it's a, it's a good choice. Well, Mel Gibson is back. Uh, this is a tough film for people who don't like war films. Um, but I think we might agree that it is a film worth seeing if you have any kind of a historical bent or if you're interested to see whether Mel Gibson actually can redeem himself, as his characters do, <laughs> when, when you think about the, uh, the outsiders that he has depicted, even from Wallace and Braveheart and then Jesus. Yes. And uh, this one, he loves these characters. Simone Wilkinson, the film is Hacksaw Ridge. What grade would you award it? Uh, you know, I, I give it an A, and maybe it's because I'm soft and I'm new, but I do give it an A. <laughs> Wonderful. And I'm going to give it an A-, minus, just to be different. <laughs> but uh, see it if you want to see. And let me say this at this time. We have the election coming up next week. And if you're looking for a hero, and you might not find it in our presidential election, do you think we've got one here? 
I think you definitely have one here. And also the very great thing about this movie is you actually meet Desmond Doss at the end. Yes. The real Desmond Doss. Yes, yes, I love that. Yeah. And he's a great guy. Uh, <laughs> and you know what? It's interesting. It really reinforced that Andrew Garfield was spot on. Oh, I know it. Yes, it Don't was. Yes, it was. All right. Thank you, Simone. Thank you so much for having me, John.